big morning here in the RC world. So RC Review is going to get in some news. The number one online RC retailer in the country, A-Main Hobbies, has acquired the number one offline or brick and mortar retailer in the country with 106 stores, Hobby Town. So in this video, I'm going to talk about who these players are and why I think this is happening, why this acquisition is happening, uh, what I want to see, what, and I'm going to ask you guys what you want to see. And hang on till the end because I have a special message about one of the key players from Amin Hobbies that is no longer with us. So who are the key players in this development? Number one is Amin Hobbies. And if you don't know them, they are the leading RC US retailer. Started in 2004 in tiny Chico, California, where they had a hobby shop that they just developed with their racetracks and whatnot. But you know, this guy Kendall Bennett, who's a cyclist and an, an RCer, but really a technologist, said, hey, I can make a better inventory you know, management system. I'm gonna out Amazon Amazon when it comes to RC. So he built up a lot of technology for delivering RC goods to consumers and really tracking them. And so that's why they're so good. You know, very hard for a small hobby shop to compete, you know, against an Amazon or, or a Horizon hobby because of all the technology that's involved in really managing, you know, <laughs> the inventory and making sure it's delivered to the customer in as fast as a, po a manner as possible, right? Because if we need our parts, we need our parts now. <laughs> so that's what they started with. And with that, they were able to grow, grow, grow really good understanding of the internet and understanding of the hobby and they really you know they just grew if you look at the amen hobbies hobby shop it puts even amazon to shame it's it's just so good and from there they've actually acquired a, a bike retailer nash bar and performance bike if you guys bike you, you guys know that and that's how i know this company i worked with them in my previous job they've also acquired dance comp uh, the number one bmx brand out there so they manage all that inventory uh, the other player is Hobby Town. Hobby Town was started in around 1985, so about 40 years of experience. And what they have is a hobby franchise model. And so I think they own their, I think they're in Indiana, a core group of guys. And you know, to, to grow their business uh, and their brand, they, they just franchise it to different people. And so what they have is hobbies, crafts, you know, little uh, STEM, you know, learning tools and whatnot. And every store is a little bit different depending on the franchise owner. But now they have 106 stores in the U.S., 35 states, I believe. So really interesting. And don't mistake like me. Have you ever gone to a, like a hobby town and then you're like, what is going on here? And then you find out it's, it's Hobby Lobby. <laughs> Like, oh, where's the RC? Their brands are super similar. I'll show you a graphic. It's, uh, it's not, the great, not the greatest differentiation between the brands. Uh, so, so, and a lot of people are like, hey, don't they own them already? And the answer is no. What's happened is A Main Hobbies runs the Hobby Town website. So, started in 2017. They formed a relationship because, hey, we know, we know website. We'll run your website. So that's why you're kind of a, everyone's kind of a little confused because when you go to the Hobby Town website, you know, it looks like uh, AMA Hobbies, you know, just different colors. So they've been running it for, what, eight, seven, eight years uh, and probably a good successful relationship. So according to my stats, 1.2 million visits here and about 400, 500,000 visits to the Hobby Town. So, you know, every time you buy something from Hobby Town, you know, A-Main Hobbies uh, gets a cut of that money. I, I don't know who gets more cut, but they have to split that revenue between them. So the next part of the development is why is this happening? Why are they doing it? Why, what are these mergers and acquisitions for? I think the main reason is, you know, these are interesting and challenging times. And what really helps these companies survive is all this development, all this uh, service to the customer and everyone's trying to figure out the online and offline component you know we as hobbyists uh, want both you know it's like buying uh, it's an apple has to figure out you know where you can get your apple watch or something online and then but if you have a problem you go offline you know to get it fixed or you need to upgrade or whatnot so they're trying to figure this out and this is a good 
hand-in-hand -hand relationship of the online and the offline. They're already working together anyway and figure they can work with each other. The other thing is competition is fierce. You know, the biggest gorilla in the space, in any space, is Amazon. Amazon is just taking over everyone with their prime scam. <laughs> scam membership uh, where they trick people and, and ratchet up the prices but it's it's their it's their silver bullet into getting you to buy from them you buy you buy prime and you pay prime and then you uh, you get free shipping and you feel compelled to use that you buy a lot of stuff from them but every time I search for RC they give you all this no-name Chinese products that you know they they have high margins on it's a very frustrating experience especially for RC you know you look for Traxxas or you know uh, fewer tech and you get three pages of crap before you actually find the stuff you're using they're just, they're just pumping you with this stuff that's high margin from them uh, not a great experience uh, and they're they're not getting any better they used to be good now they're just getting worse their prices are, are are pretty bad as well the other one is horizon hobby horizon hobby is the gorilla in the RC space because not only do they have a retail shop but they also have all these brands and then they keep acquiring you know you know brand brand brand, brand. so and they're getting a lot of power and I'm seeing a lot of these new releases are not being offered to A-Main uh, pretty quickly you know only when when uh, when when there's massive inventory will they give it to A-Main you know when it's in short supply you're, you're like oh you're in the waiting list so I don't know how that's gonna pan out but it's gonna give A-Main really a lot more leverage you know they're gonna it's gonna give them a lot more brands a lot more important so they get the prime stuff uh, when it's current so A-Main Hobbies and Horizon Hobbies seem to be neck and neck in traffic. You know, one, one and a half million uh, views, visits a month. And with this acquisition, it looks like A-Main will now uh, surpass Horizon Hobby for, for now uh, in, in web traffic because now all the Hobby Town traffic will be A-Main traffic. They own that company now and they'll keep all that revenue. So what does this mean for the hobby? What does it mean for the industry? So I think it's only good because there's no brands here involved really. It's just gonna stabilize the, the and maybe up the value and the experience from Hobby Town. So with the guidance of A-Main and their ownership, now they can really drive the user experience in Hobby Town. So they, they, they'll have the online experience for sure, but now the, on, the offline, I think what people really want is, man, you know, just respect the RC, you know, give it some, give it some inventory, you know, if give me the hot inventory and give me the, the upgrade and, and race inventory that I need, you know, have some cracks. I think it's just going to up the game of hobby town and maybe it will allow them to open franchises uh, in key parts of the country. You know, a main, I'm sure knows where hobbies, you know, RC hobby is hot and what, parts it's growing in because they have all this information. They're a, a data warehouse. You know, they know how, what, what how much is selling in Idaho, in Boise, and what's selling there, and if there's a hobby shop that's, that's missing there. So maybe they can do some of the logistics studying and, and really optimize uh, where the shops are and what they should specialize in. So optimize that the offline experience as well as online. The other part of it is I want to hear from you guys. What do you think is going to happen here? Um, what, uh, what do you want to see uh, from, from this relationship? You know, it's always cool when you're like, you have a problem online and you, you, you go to your, your uh, local shop and return it there or exchange it there or something. Maybe, so maybe some of, some of this situation. So we'll see. We'll see what happens there, right? By the way, our main source of revenue for RC Review is A Main Hobbies uh, because YouTube hardly gives me any money for advertising, even though the tra the, the the channel is very popular. Uh, a lot of the revenue comes from uh, the affiliate links in the description. So make sure you, uh, whenever you're considering to buy anything that I review or anything at all, just click on the link, and for 15 days I'll get credit for anything you purchase. Uh, in fact, I'll put a link in this description right here. So. Um, just a general link and and you can click on it before you buy anything and finally a special message uh, a month or two ago we lost a very special person in the rc world uh, a main hobbies employee kevin jellick so kevin was a track builder he had a crew he was a one-man gang but he had a crew of the best probably builders in the country and they've hosted a lot of world championships and whatnot i think h scale 
is his, uh, uh, his, his, his real favorite and, and that's where all the, the big racing is. But they have all kinds of tracks and Kevin is the man. We yeah. only use the sugar and water uh, on the jumps. And what you're actually seeing here is the, the aluminum from the chassis. And so how, my relationship with Kevin, I, when, when, I, when my son was born 20 years ago, I, I started RCing at Norcal Hobbies because I saw their track, uh, outdoor track, and it was Kevin who was uh, the manager, the builder uh, of that in Union City, California. So I, I, I met quite a few people there. And Kevin was a builder like no other. You know, we didn't have the best dirt, he didn't have the best equipment, but he was always building, always changing the track. And he would just, I, would just, I started racing. You just do race on his track. And he would always grab my car, road car, off-road car. And he goes, what you doing, Francis? And then he would make my janky car perform like no other, no matter what it was. So really cool. And we've kept in touch over the years. He was offered a job at A-Main and he, he moved to Chico, California. And, and that would, and, and then NorCal Hobbies and my, and my interest in the hobby just deflated after that. I stopped, stopped doing it. It was a long drive for me from, from Campbell, California. So, but I kept in touch with Kevin and I was always, you know, I was like kindred spirit to them because he really pursued what he loved. Uh, he was really good at it. Uh, and then he would show me all these fishing photos. <laughs> he was such a great fisherman. Uh, and then he would be snowboarding as well. I think more as a, as a, as a kid. Uh, he would just live in his RV and, and, and whatnot. But, you know, I've seen the outpouring of, of emotion and support for Kevin uh, in his passing. I'm not sure how he passed away, um, but really, I've never seen our seers, uh, you know, just, just be so emotional. You know, they, Kevin really influenced a lot of people, uh, and he influenced A-Main, uh, instrumental in, in their growth. Uh, and it's, uh, it's really sad that we lost uh, a special person. He was young, much younger than me. And he leaves a gaping hole in the RC industry for sure. But hopefully he has a crew there that will take over his legacy uh, and uh, that, that A-Main uh, remains uh, in, in good hands uh, with, with the team that he left there. All right, so that's all I know. Uh, please chime in the comments, uh, your information and what you'd like to see from this acquisition. Thanks a ton.